afternoon, uh, everybody. Great to, uh, to have you all here. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, uh, to speak here uh, on behalf of uh, my company uh, and to have the, uh, the opportunity uh, from, uh, from, from uh, the Jack. Let me control the, uh, the slides. Um, yeah, welcome to, uh, to my presentation uh, on uh, innovative uh, product solutions for, uh, for pressure tanks, uh, for uh, hydrogen and, uh, and, and CNG uh, gas storage. They, they find their application in, uh, in transportation, uh, the many modes that, that uh, we, we find in our uh, daily lives. My name is uh, Sigrid Ter Heide, uh, and I'm in a marketing commercial role uh, at Westlake uh, Epoxy. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with, uh, with Westlake, uh, just a short introduction uh, about the company. Um, it's last year that uh, Westlake acquired the uh, coatings and composites uh, group of, uh, of Hexion. Uh, so we are now integrated in the uh, in the um, uh, divisional structure of, uh, of Westlake, uh, actually in uh, performance and essential materials. Um, Westlake is uh, a public listed uh, company, um, uh, Fortune 500, and uh, at the same time family owned, uh, the family Chow. They have uh, more than 75% uh, of the, uh, the shares. It's uh, US based, uh, so headquartered in, uh, in uh, Texas, uh, Houston. Uh, meanwhile, have grown to 16,000 uh, employees through various uh, acquisitions. Uh, and we basically have uh, a global footprint, so with manufacturing and office locations uh, on, on every continent. Uh, Westlake uh, takes sustainability uh, very seriously. Uh, it's embedded uh, through our organization. Um, our uh, strategy is aligned with the United Nations uh, sustainability uh, goals and uh, we are reporting according to uh, the formal uh, sustainability structures like uh, TCFD, GRI and uh, SASB. We've also established uh, a goal to uh, reduce carbon footprint, uh, scope one and two, by 20% by uh, 2030 compared to a 2016 baseline. Uh, so that means that those projects are already ongoing. It's uh, on energy efficiency, it's uh, uh, replacement with uh, renewable energy and uh, yeah, various optimization uh, projects. Uh, we are also implementing uh, carbon content, uh, renewable content in our uh, products. Uh, I will speak in more detail uh, to that one. Uh, so that helps to, uh, to reduce the carbon footprint um, for uh, the lightweight composite applications uh, as well. Uh, we, we, we did share uh, our company information and data with uh, Ecovades uh, and got uh, for 2022 uh, a platinum scoring. So that uh, ranks us in the, uh, the top 1% uh, of, comp uh, of companies and it's, yeah, it's a recognition for our sustainability performance. Um, from corporate to, uh, to uh, our group level, uh, as Westlake Epoxy, we are doing much more than uh, reduction of scope one and two emissions. Uh, we enhance the renewable content uh, in our uh, raw materials uh, and thus in our final products. So that uh, is influencing uh, scope three uh, upstream. Uh, we are also working on uh, recycling concepts um, to uh, also to lower uh, carbon footprint and to, uh, to address uh, climate change. Um, uh, and furthermore, uh, our, uh, all our new product developments, they are rated against a rigorous uh, requirement matrix to ensure uh, that yeah, any new development is uh, scoring higher on safe and more sustainable uh, use. Now, a very obvious one is the, uh, the first bullet point uh, you see on this slide uh, with our sales of epoxy resins into the, uh, the, the, the wind energy market, uh, we help uh, installation of, uh, of green energy. 
Yeah, as, as said, um, uh, somewhat more detail to, uh, to our uh, renewable products. Um, the epoxy uh, matrices are uh, traditionally made from, uh, from the fossil uh, feedstocks. Uh, I think the good news is, is that there are uh, renewable alternatives uh, available, uh, either coming from uh, biosourcing, uh, from uh, recycling, so circularity, so that could be uh, plastic waste, uh, polyolefins, uh, or a combination of both, uh, both the, um, the, the, the biocircular. Uh, we are taking uh, a mass balance approach, uh, as many other uh, chemical companies uh, do, because in, yeah, in our facilities we cannot separate the, uh, the fossil from the, um, from the renewable feedstock. So it, they go together, uh, and with the mass balancing you have yeah, very transparent bookkeeping of what you are able to secure on the, on the raw material side uh, and allo allocate that to, uh, to final products. Uh, certified, uh, so in that sense, uh, yeah, there's no uh, white washing. washing. Uh, we, we did certify our uh, base epoxy resin plant in, uh, in Pernis, uh, so that, that announcement uh, was made. Uh, we also have ISCC Plus uh, certification from these green uh, renewable uh, feedstocks. Uh, and what is work in progress is for uh, the specialties plant in, uh, in Duisburg, uh, to go for a Red Cert 2 uh, certification, and with that we would uh, basically have the, uh, the whole supply chain uh, covered. The timeline uh, for that implementation is, uh, as said, uh, the second half of, uh, of this year. Uh, so from next year, uh, we expect um, we are able to sell um, uh, mass-balanced uh, renewable products. Um, as yeah, the, the epoxy system is, is more than just the, uh, the resin, uh, we are also yeah, reaching out to our supplier base, uh, collecting the, uh, the data from them, see if they are uh, working on renewable options so that we can offer a yeah, completely uh, renewable system. On the somewhat longer run, uh, we expect that um, in these renewable offerings, there will also be yeah, circular content, so basically from the, the, the closed loop uh, recycling of, uh, of composites. In, in that uh, transition to uh, a, a greener uh, economy, uh, hydrogen uh, will become, uh, will be very important. Um, it is uh, yeah, just um, uh, ramping up and the, uh, the final implementation will, of course, depend on, uh, on the, uh, the climate goals that are set by the, uh, the various uh, uh, regions and, uh, and, and member states. So in this graph, you see uh, the demand of hydrogen uh, on the left side in, uh, in kilotons, on the right side in, uh, in, in energy uh, quantity, so uh, terawatt hour. Um, as a function of um, strong, uh, medium or weak uh, policy setting. So if, if governments strive for low global warming, uh, you will see yeah, a, a very high and, and rapid growth of, uh, of hydrogen. That hydrogen uh, goes in the, yeah, in, the, in the chemical industry, uh, of course in, uh, in, in other industries as well, but an important sector is transportation, because 20% of uh, the emissions right now are uh, generated by the, uh, by the uh, transportation sector. So the eight, 850,000 is a number uh, that I took from uh, a McKinsey article from last year, uh, so it's a prediction of the, uh, the number of uh, medium and heavy duty trucks that will be around uh, in, in 2035 uh, uh, if yeah, that, that, that growth uh, continues. So yeah, m m hydrogen will be a, a, a key factor. Um, yeah. Also maybe to mention here is that, uh, that for, the, uh, for the track sector, that's probably a, a stepwise uh, approach. Uh, that first hydrogen is used for, uh, for combustion, and then in a second step uh, for the uh, fuel cell uh, driven uh, cars. So with a fuel stack and, uh, and, and a tank. Uh, to produce all these tanks uh, with uh, 
the right uh, requirements, uh, a lot of carbon fiber uh, will be needed. And um, yeah, some of you might be familiar with this graph from, uh, from Composites World, uh, predicting that that will uh, take uh, 145 to 170 kilotons of, uh, of carbon fiber. Um, it different, somewhat different by region. Uh, Asia, uh, the, the, the strongest growth, uh, China, Korea, and Japan, uh, where the uh, United States is, uh, is on the low side because there's only uh, regulation in, uh, in California right now to, to support hydrogen, and, and Europe is, is uh, somewhere in the, in the middle. Uh, there is support, of course, from the, the European Commission and the, uh, and the member states. Um, the, the carbon fiber goes together with the, uh, the matrix, and um, the pressure tank has to fulfill uh, yeah, r regulations, uh, standards, uh, a certain performance to, uh, to meet the, uh, the, the customer uh, requirements. Um, in yeah, continuous conversation with customers, uh, we have derived uh, this overview of um, material properties that are then yeah, key to, to achieve those uh, performances. Um, they, um, the, 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 the standards uh, basically describe the, uh, the use uh, conditions. Uh, of course, uh, first to start with, uh, with pressure, uh, also, the, uh, the load cycles, um, exposure to high and low uh, temperatures, um, contact with, uh, with chemical uh, media like uh, automotive fluids, and uh, exceptional cases uh, like, like a fire. Um, so, so they yeah, set the, um, uh, the, the CTQs, uh, critical to quality uh, properties for the, uh, for the matrix as well. Um, established uh, technology to produce uh, these hydrogen tanks or CNG tanks uh, is uh, filament winding. Uh, and uh, you, show, uh, you, you see here uh, our products uh, for that technology uh, that fulfill uh, the requirements uh, on, on the slide before. Um, we can disting distinguish between uh, anhydride and uh, epoxy uh, chemistry. Uh, anhydride, uh, uh, somewhat longer in cure cycle uh, and a longer pot life, uh, so can be um, well managed in, uh, in production. The epoxy amine systems uh, are faster, uh, shorter cure cycles, which is good for uh, productivity for, for hydrogen tanks, but that pot life uh, needs to be uh, balanced. The, the first system uh, maybe stands out with, uh, with a high TG uh, as, as a pure uh, IPDA uh, system. Um, zooming in on the, uh, on the technical uh, properties, uh, you, you see here that uh, viscosity is quite low, uh, which is uh, good for the, uh, for the filament winding uh, process, impregnation and, uh, and wetting uh, of the fibers. Um, the, uh, the pot life is order of magnitude uh, two to five hours, uh, which yeah, allows to, uh, to manage that uh, in production. The recommended cure cycle, and that is the, uh, the differentiator between uh, both, is five hours for the, uh, for the anhydride and only one and a half hours for, uh, for the amine systems. So that is yeah, significantly lower. Uh, also showing uh, technical properties uh, for the uh, for the resin systems, um, you you can see that they are quite on par. Uh, so in that sense, uh, uh, no big difference between anhydride and uh, and amine. Uh, but these are predictors for the uh, for the for the final tank performance. So tensile properties, um, yeah, uh, are, are a good prediction. Uh, for the uh, for the burst pressure that we have seen in the uh, in the overview, and elongation at break and fracture toughness for the fatigue performance, and that connects with uh, with the load cycles, um, so the dynamic conditions, uh, so to say. 
we are um, continuously uh, uh, investigating uh, the relationship between these properties and uh, the final tank performance and also the final tank design. And yeah, the, there are factors like the, uh, the, the fiber orientation, the, the thickness, uh, liner choices that of course have uh, an influence as well. I want to, uh, to show you uh, uh, a few demonstrators that, that you can also see at, uh, at our booth. Uh, the first one is from uh, Patria Composite in, uh, in Croatia. It's a, a newcomer, I think, uh, in, in this field. Uh, so it is with the uh, 6557, um, 6571, so it's one of the more balanced uh, amine systems. Um, yeah, what the benefits it shows uh, on, on a tank level is a su superior strength, uh, stiffness to weight ratio, and a very good fatigue performance that translates then in, uh, in uh, extended uh, service lifetime. So that one um, can be seen, as well as a type 5 uh, linerless um, hydrogen tank from uh, BNT Composites uh, in green. Greece, um, made from uh, an anhydride uh, system, and the absence of liner uh, has yeah, a couple of, uh, of benefits. Uh, it, it, it avoids compatibility issues with the, uh, the matrix. Uh, it's lower cost because you have uh, a one-step process, um, higher temperature, uh, curing temperature possible, because the liner is, o is often the, uh, the, the bottleneck or the limitation for the, uh, for the cure cycle. Uh, and it gives some more uh, flexibility in the, uh, in the dimensions. We do also offer uh, toughened uh, solutions. Um, they increase the, uh, the impact uh, performance, uh, but they are also uh, thought to, uh, to increase strain, uh, burst pressure and uh, dynamic performance. And if uh, that dynamic or fatigue performance is improved, you, you could reduce on carbon fiber uh, and have yeah, lower cost, uh, lower weight uh, pressure tank, uh, finally. Uh, this is part of the uh, yeah, ongoing investigation to, to prove that uh, relationship and also to, uh, to design our resin systems then as such that it finally brings uh, those savings or benefits. Um, Switching gears to, um, to Taubrek, uh, relatively new uh, technology, uh, already uh, in the market for, uh, for, for a few years. Uh, Taubrek uh, could have the benefit of uh, higher productivity. You can go to faster winding because there's, there's no resin uh, flying around. Um, uh, um, very accurate placement of the, uh, of the taus, uh, so less scrap, uh, less waste, less cleaning. Um, we do offer uh, two systems, the, the 5920 the 5940. Uh, the difference between the two is uh, the first one uh, need, needs uh, a heated um, line or impregnation, and the second one can be uh, processed at uh, ambient uh, room, temperature, room temperatures. Um, we also have an uh, exhibit uh, made with this uh, Taubrek. Uh, technology uh, from uh, from MF Tech, uh, so also uh, at our booth, and I want to uh, to show you uh, a short video uh, from the uh, the production. Process, Tauprec process enables uh, automation. Uh, so you see here uh, robots, uh, also robot uh, program programming. The, uh, the, the Tauprec uh, reels and, uh, and tension is uh, programmed, uh, controlled. And here you see the, uh, the winding on the, uh, on the pressure tank. Uh, so as said uh, very, very precisely, 
uh, according to a programmed uh, pattern. Uh, and yeah, the, 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 the tau break is uh, smoothly uh, unwinding, uh, so gives a, 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 go a good uh, quality service. We see this as, uh, as a promising technology, provided that um, uh, with the winding speed, also the, uh, the, the tau break speed uh, can, can keep, keep up. So that brings me to the, uh, the key takeaways uh, for, this, for this presentation. So you have seen uh, the commitment that, that Westlake uh, has to, uh, to sustainability uh, and uh, the ongoing implementation of uh, renewable products uh, for a lower carbon footprint and in the end address uh, climate change. Uh, our product offerings, uh, epoxy, they, they contribute to the, uh, the high productivity uh, requirements uh, and uh, help to to meet the final performance requirements uh, of the tank and yeah we continue our efforts uh, with our customers but also with uh, external partners to study the uh, the, the property uh, performance design uh, relationship with yeah the end goal to uh, to, to reduce on uh, on carbon fiber because that is the, uh, the most uh, expensive and um, constrained uh, component uh, in the tanks. I want to invite you uh, to our booth to, uh, to see the demonstrators uh, and also to, uh, to engage in, uh, in conversations with our uh, capable team. Uh, I see a few of, of them sitting uh, in the audience here. Uh, so we, yeah, we, we can answer uh, all questions uh, you have. I want to thank you for your attention and uh, wish you uh, a successful rest of the show. Thank you very much. <laughs>